Hi guys, today let's discuss the lead code question 80, remove duplicates from sorted array 2. I hope you must have already solved the remove duplicates from sorted array 1, so which is an easy question. So this is a variation to that question. Given an integer array nums sorted in non-decreasing order, remove duplicates in place such that each unique element appears at most twice. So this is the only difference between the uh, sorted array 1 and sorted array 2. And after removing all such elements uh, which are occurring more than twice, we have to return k such that by placing all the elements which occur twice in the first k slots of the nums array. Yeah, let's go to the example 1. The nums array is 1 comma 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2 and 3. So 1 is occurring twice. So we remove one occurrence of it and finally the output is going to be 1, 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2 and 3. And let's go to the example 2. In the example 2, the nums array is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2 and 3, 3. And if we, we can clearly see that 1 is occurring 4 times. So we remove 2 occurrences of it and the output will be 0, 0, 1, 1, 2 and 3, 3. And let's go to the constraint section as well. Uh, the nums dot length can vary from 1, 2, 3 into 10 to the power of 4. So which means we need not handle any corner case where nums, uh, nums length is uh, 0 and nums of i is ranging from minus 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 4 and nums is sorted in non-decreasing order. So which means it is sorted in ascending order. I hope it is very clear from this question description. Let us go into the explanation part of it. For the purpose of explanation, I am considering example 2 that is provided in the question description. For the simplicity purpose, I have written all these nums array in the below as well. And I am making use of PTR to track the unique elements. And CTR is going to give the count of the unique elements. And I is used for iterating through the nums array. Since the PTR is located at the zero value, we are initially maintaining this count value as 1. Now let us proceed with the explanation. If we check the nums of PTR is equal to equal to nums of i and the value of count is equal to 1. So which means there is only one occurrence of unique elements. But in the question description it clearly says we can have at most two occurrences of the unique element. So for that reason we are incrementing the PTR value then we will also increment the count value. Yes, now both the PTR and the count values are updated. After this, we will perform the swapping of nums of PTR and nums of i. But in this case, there won't be any change because nums of i and nums of PTR are pointing to the same location. After this, we are going to increment our i pointer. After incrementing the i pointer, we can clearly see that the nums of PTR is not equal to nums of i. So in this case, we are going to take this unique element that is 1. So we are going to increment our PTR value and also reset our count value to 1. PTR is incremented and the count value is also updated. After this, we are going to perform the swapping of nums of i and nums of PTR. But at this time, the nums of i and nums of PTR are pointing to the same location and so it does not make any difference. After this, we are going to increment our ith pointer. After incrementing our ith pointer, we can clearly see that the nums of PTR is equal to equal to nums of i and the value of count is equal to 1. So in this case, we will be again incrementing our PTR value and also we will be updating the count. PTR is updated and also the count is also updated. Now we can clearly see that nums of i and nums of PTR are at the same location. So even if we perform a swap, there isn't going to be any change. After this, we are going to increment our ith pointer. After incrementing the ith pointer, the nums of PTR equal to equal to nums of i. But now the value of count is equal to 2. We can only have two occurrences of the unique element, but this is going to be a third occurrence. So in this case, we are not going to update anything and we are going to 
move on to the next element so we will be updating the ith pointer yes after updating the ith pointer we can clearly see that the nums of ptr equal to equal to nums of i and the value of count is equal to 2 so there isn't going to be any change even this time and the value of ith pointer will be incremented again after incrementing the ith pointer we can clearly see that the nums of ptr is not equal to nums of i so in this case we are going to update our ptr value and also reset the count of it to 1 yes ptr is updated and also the count is initialized to 1 then we are going to perform the swap of this ptr and ith location now after performing the swapping operation we will move on to the next element so the ith pointer will be incremented after the ith pointer is incremented we can clearly see that the nums of ptr is not equal to nums of i so in this case we will increment the ptr and also initialize the count to 1 and perform the swapping operation ptr is incremented and the count is initialized to 1 and the swapping of 1 and 3 needs to take place after performing the swap the ith pointer will be incremented again after incrementing the ith pointer the num we can clearly see that the nums of ptr equal to equal to nums of i and the value of count equal to 1 in this case my ptr will be incremented by 1 and count will be updated to 2 and the swapping operation will take place the swapping of 1 and 3 needs to take place now yes the swapping is also completed once the swapping is completed we have reached the end of nums array finally we are going to return ptr plus 1 i hope it is very clear from this explanation let's quickly code this up let's start by initializing the ptr to 0 and count value to 1 ptr comma cnt is equal to 0 comma 1 then let's loop through the entire nums array for i in range of 1 to length of nums if nums of i equal to equal to nums of ptr and cnt is less than 2 so in this case we are going to increment our ptr value the count will also be incremented then we perform the swapping nums of ptr comma nums of i is equal to nums of i comma nums of ptr else if nums of i is not equal to nums of ptr yeah. in this case we are going to increment our ptr and the count will be initialized to 1 and we also perform the swapping operation like above nums of ptr comma nums of i is equal to nums of i comma nums of ptr in the else condition we will not perform any operations so that is else condition is not necessary finally we are going to return ptr plus 1 I hope we are done. Let's quickly run the code. Uh, it is accepted. Let's quickly submit as well. Yes, it is submitted. Hope you like the explanation. For more such videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.